Visualizing data can be a very powerful tool in the arsenal of a data scientist. Visualizing data makes it easier to find the underlying patterns in the data. You can gain a lot of insight just by expressing data in the form of charts and graphs. These insights can be used for further investigation. And after the investigation is done, you'll again need to visualize data to present the data to your colleagues and seniors. Charts and graphs make a very effective way to communicate information. Matplotlib is a library which will help you in data visualization. In this session, you will be learning creating and plotting graphs, different chart types, and modification of charts for better understanding and presentation. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello and welcome to the lecture for Matplotlib. In this lecture, we are going to talk about Matplotlib. One of the very useful features of every programming language is the functionality regarding plots. You always want to plot a curve or a bar chart or any scatter plot information that you are interested in. In Python, there are many libraries that are providing us such a service. Matplotlib is one of those libraries. In order for you to start working with Matplotlib, we are going to import PyPlot from Matplotlib as PLT. And then we import NumPy as NP for, uh, to, to use the NumPy library. Let's start with the bar chart. We would like to plot sales across each product category. What is a bar chart? A bar chart, as the name says, uses bars to show comparisons between categories of data. It usually has two axes, one with numerical values and the other one with categories or dimensions. Let's start with a very simple example where we have the following product categories. So I'm going to create a NumPy array of strings, which are the product categories of interest, furniture, technologies, and office supplies. And in another NumPy array, I'm going to save the sales corresponding to each of those categories. This is the sale for furniture, technology, and office supplies. Next, I would like to plot a bar chart. In order for us to plot the bar chart, we're going to use PLT, which is basically the PyPlot section of the matplotlib library, dot bar. And here, we need to provide two entries inside parentheses. The first one would be the x-axis and the second one would be the y-axis. And as I said before, one axis contains numerical values, which are the sales here, and the other axis describes the type of categories being compared or dimensions, which are the product category here. Finally, in order to get the plot, we need to call plot.show parentheses. Let me run this. I'm going to get a bar chart here with furniture, technology, and office supplies being the x-axis. And in the y-axis, you would get the corresponding sales of each category. As mentioned, you are using bars to plot the values for furniture, technology, and office supplies. So this is what we refer to as bar chart. So this was the very first example, a simple one, in which we had uh, three values for product categories, furniture, technology, and office supplies respectively, and we plot the bar chart. Now let's do some modifications to the bar chart. For instance, uh, here we are going to add labels to the axis, reducing the bar width, uh, adding some title, and some minor modifications to the axis. Now let's begin by changing the width of each chart to 0.5 and aligning them to the center. 
So the, the first thing that we are going to do here is as follows. We're going to plot the same bar chart, but with changing the bar with 2.5 and aligning it to the center. To do so, we have to do to write plot.bar, the information on the x-axis, y-axis, width equal to 0.5, align equal to center. Now let's also add some color to the picture. We want to change the edge color to orange and the main color, the bar color to say uh, let me run this block of code and see what we get. So we've done the following. We've changed the bar chart to 0.5, aligning it to center. They're already center aligned, but it's just to point out that there's an input called align center. We've changed the edge color of each bar to orange and uh, the main color to cyan. In the next step, we are going to add title. So the goal here is again to plot the same bar chart, but we want to add title. So that would just add the title on the same bar chart. You, you begin with a string being the title. So that would be sales across product categories. And then you define a so-called font dict. Remember when we talked about the dictionary, it was consist of some keys and the corresponding values. So we can pack all the information about the font in the so-called font dict. That information are font size. So we want the font size to be 20. We want the font weight. These are all keys, font size, font weight, and all of that. We want the font weight to be five. And we want the color of the title and font to be green. Let me run this. So when I run this, I'll get sales across product categories with the font size of 20, font weight of five. And as you can see, it's in green. Another thing that we notice here is that the uh, 10 to the power of six has somehow uh, overlapped with the title. So we can just add a breaking here. And as you can see, now you have a line break here that would kind of separate the title from the 10 to the power of six corresponding to the sales. So with that, we have added title to the bar chart. Next, we are going to add X axis label and Y axis label. So, Next, next task would be labeling axes and on the same bar chart and again from the matplotlib library we have x label we're going to name x label as product category and we can use a similar font dict here when I use the font dict, I can change the font size to 12. I'm just going to use a smaller font here, and I want the color to be brown. I can define a very similar Y label, where the Y label, I wanted this to be sales, because I'm showing and plotting the sales on the Y axis. Uh, same 12 font size and font weight and the same color. When I run this, I can see that sales and product category are printed with a smaller font compared to the title with the color brown here on this screen. So I've added title and label axis. Now, I would like to do a smaller change. I wanted to modify the ticks to show information in million dollars. So previously, the ticks are showing, you know, one, two, three, four, five, 
um, 10 to the power 6, right? So let's do that. Let's define ticks to be a NumPy array. And remember, we had a range to create a NumPy array starting from 0 to 6 million. Let's make sure this is 6 million. And the distance between the ticks are 1 million each. So this is 1 million. So with this, I only find a NumPy array starting from zero, ending in six million, and they are ticks every one million. Next, I'm gonna define labels as follows. So I'm gonna define labels, and then I'm going to do plt y ticks because these are the ticks corresponding to the y axis ticks and labels so when I run this I'm, I'm getting this which is just some information it's telling me what it has done with the ticks and mostly y ticks y axis ticks but as you can see I have a number followed by m and that number is coming from the sales value divided by 1 million for every number in the ticks so just just for a sake of clarity let me just print a ticks here for you because ticks is just a numpy array it's a numpy array with 0 1 million 2 million 3 million 4 million 5 million 6 million is ex excluded here and it has put all those numbers here the only difference here is that instead of showing the number in 1 million it is showing an integer number followed by capital M, where the integer number is coming from the actual number divided by 1 million. Okay. So in this part of the lecture, we have modified the original bar chart of sales versus the product category, where we have uh, modified the width of the bar. We have added title X, axis label and y-axis label and we have modified the ticks of the y-axis so in example one we talked about bar charts another type of plots or charts that we have in python under matplotlib is a so-called scatter chart scatter charts or scatter plots are used when you want to show the relationship between two data one is shown on the x-axis, the other one on the y. Let's begin with an example to talk about scatter plot. We want to plot sales versus profits across various countries and product categories. So here is our data. We have around 50 country and for each of those countries, there's a specific product category, a profit and a sales attached to that data. So our sales data is a NumPy array of size 50. You see, the profit is of the same size. Product category comes in technology, office supplies, furniture, and so on and so forth. And then we have about 50 countries. So here is our data. Now let's plot sales versus profit in a scatter plot form. So I'm going to do plt.scatter profit on the x axis, sales on the y axis. There are other parameters that you can set when you are doing a scatter plot. One of them is alpha, which is the uh, transparency. So one is the default. 0.7 makes it more transparent and the sample count which is 50 here let me run this so with that i'm gonna get uh, a scatter plot as you can see uh, there you can see points corresponding to every profit 
and sales per year. So for this profit, this value of sales is plotted here. So this is how they got plotted in an XY tuple form. Uh, the transparency is, is kind of 0.7, more transparent than the default value of one, and this is what we get. We can start adding a title, X label and Y label as follows. So I'm gonna just uh, follow the same format I did for the bar chart. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add title and plt.title would add the title. Now here being sales versus profit across various countries, I have a break line here and I have font size, weight and color like I've had before for the bar chart. plt.title would add this title to the same scatter plot that we have here. Running this block of code would give me the same scatter plot, but with the title added and the font size and all of that font weight that we have indicated under plt.title. I can add plt.x label. Remember, that was plt.x label and y label here. I'm just gonna do the very similar thing here. Let me just uh, do labeling axis. Paste that code here and kind of start changing them. Uh, here, the X label is profit. I'm just going to use the same font dict and the Y label is actually sales. And let me run this code. So I'm going to get profit on the X axis, which was the case. Sales on the Y axis printed with the font size of 12 and the color of brown here in the scatter plot. So as you can see, if you really want all the points to be shown here, you can use scatter plot. Versus for the bar chart, you wanted a more, um, you know, histogram form or fashion that you want. So it's up to you which uh, type of uh, plot is more applicable to the scenario that you are showing, whether it be the bar chart or scatter plot in this case. Now let's continue with the scatter chart and do more of uh, the scatter charts. Next we want to plot sales versus profit, like we did here, across various countries and product categories. So one thing that, that happened here is that we've plotted the sales versus profit, but there is no notion of product category or country here. We want to add that notion into this scatter plot. So um, here's what we are going to do. We are going to do plt.scatter profit sales. Okay, let me just do this and see what we get. This is the previous scatter chart or scatter plot that we have. Let me also add alpha and s to this. Okay. The goal here is to add this notion of represent product categories in different color and also adding a legend for product categories. Let's do this. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to plot the profit and sales, but add the product category, meaning that I'm only going to plot profits and sales for which the product category equals technology. If you look at the product category in the data, we have technology, but when we go down this list, we can see office supplies, and then later on, we may also even see furniture, right? Because these are the three product categories we started with. What we are trying to do here is that we are trying to plot the sales uh, for different product categories and let's just do this. So let's start by doing the scatter plot and filtering by the product category equal to technology. So I have to do the same thing for sales and let's set a color here, C equals green. 
Okay. If I run this code, I'm going to get fewer points because now I have filtered by product category and those points are now in green. So these are all the profits and sales in this NumPy array for which the corresponding product category is technology. So it has filtered out office supplies and furniture. I can do a very similar thing for the other product categories, right? So I can do another scatter plot and now set this to office supplies. Right, so I'm going to add to this scatter plot the rest of the points for which the product category is office supplies. I'm going to set another color so that I can identify those on the on the scatter plot. Let me run this code. So this is what I'm going to get. I'm going to get more points and the extra points are now in yellow and they refer to or they are corresponding to the office supplies. I can also add a label here, right? Because let's say someone, I'm going to show this to an audience where they have no clue what, what each point is referring to. So I'm going to add a label, which we we'll also call legend. And that label could be just technology, yeah, right? I'm also going to add another label here that label is going to be office supplies. So let me run this code. If I run this, I'm going to get... Okay, when I run this, I'm not, seeing, I'm not seeing any indication of these labels. What I need to do here is that I have to do plt.legend parenthesis. When I do this, I'm going to get now the legends, as in a box, where it points to what label is referring to. So it's kind of telling the audience or whoever sees this plot that the green dots are technology data and the yellow dots are the office supplies. Obviously, I need the same uh, labels for X and Y axis as I had it before. So that it shows that this is the sales, Y axis, and the X axis is the profit. I can continue with my last product category, which is furniture. So I'm just going to filter the profit and sales based on the product category of furniture. So and add the label here as well. I also need a new color here. Let that new color be cyan. And uh, but let's run this. Okay, so I'm gonna get more points. Obviously now the combination of green, yellow, and cyan would amount to the same number of points I have here. The, the benefit or the beauty of this new uh, scatter plot is that it is still showing sales versus profit, but now it has divided and correspondingly labeled all the data corresponding to each category with its own specific color and a box of legends, which indicates what each color is referring to or what category of products uh, they are representing here. So this would be our example, a complete example of a scatter plot where you not only plot X, Y information here, sales versus X, which is profit, you have also added a kind of a third dimension here which refers to the product type or product category being either be technology or office supplies or furniture. And in order to show that third dimension, you are using colors to do so and scatter plot with the help of filtering and a label and a color can help us doing so. So the only trick that we have used here is that instead of, instead of plotting the entire profit and sales all in one, we first plot the sales versus profit 
only for the product category of technology and this is how you would filter that. Having this four NumPy array at hand where all are, are the same size, you can filter specific points in all of these arrays by filtering or pointing to a specific product category here. So far we have introduced bar chart which shows data in form of y versus x in a bar chart fashion and we also introduce scatter plots which uh, plots the points uh, all separately uh, in one figure again y versus x another type of uh, chart that we have under matplotlib in python is the so-called line chart line chart which is also known as line plot or line graph is a type of chart that displays information for a series of data points which we call the markers those data points are now connected by a straight line segment it's a very common type of uh, uh, plotting that we use on time series type of data we talked about time series data uh, which basically stores a, a value for each single date time or second and so on and so forth. So let us uh, plot sales across the year of 2015 for uh, the information that we have. So the X axis information here would be the month data. I have a NumPy array, which is nothing but name of the month of the year. And on the Y axis, I would like to plot the sales data. It's a NumPy array of floating values. What I would like to do is that I would like to plot a line chart. So I don't want them to be scattered like this. There is a connection between the data. I want to see how much the sales has changed from the month of January to the month of February. In the example of profit versus sales, there, there was a distinction between each product category, either be it in technology or office supplies. But there was no connection between each between the other data points that's why you have them all scattered uh, and that, that's why you use the scatter plot to plot them but here i want a straight line to connect each two data points each two consecutive data points to be more accurate for that you're going to use matplotlib which we have imported as plt and i'm going to use plot function so previously we have used a uh, bar for bar chart. We have used um, scatter for scatter plot. And now we are using plot for line chart. So I'm going to do month, which is the information for x axis and sales for y. When I do so, you can see that I get the following I get the sales for each month, and they are connected consecutively in the order of month with a line segment. You can see that, well, we don't have title and stuff. We can add them as we did before. And also the separation of month is not, you know, very beautiful. So let's start by fixing that. Let's start adding some title to that. So adding a title is like before. I'm going to use plt.title. And I want that to be a sales across 2015 and a font that we, we've completely explained before. When I run this, I'm going to get sales across 2015 in font 20 and color green. Next, I'm going to add a label access, right? So I'm going to add the following. I'm going to add month on their x-axis sales besides y-axis with the font of 12 and the color of brown. So when I do so, I get this month and sales here along with X and Y axis respectively. Adding the ticks is also like before. So I can add Y ticks to the Y axis. So I can have these numbers to be printed either in million or a thousand. Previously we did it for the million now we are doing it with thousands so we are going to have a number followed by a capital k on the y-axis ticks 
I'm going to have a NumPy array ranging from 0 to 600,000 with the spaces of 50,000. And that would be my Tix NumPy array. And again, labels are a number followed by a K, where that number is computed from the number in ticks divided by 1,000. Let me run this. So apart from some metadata that is printed here, you can see that it starts from 0K, goes to 50K, 100K, and it makes the y-axis more readable here. So how do we kind of make this cleaner? Well, obviously, because this uh, every because the name of each month in English is relatively long and you want them all to print it within this uh, space. One thing to fix it is just to rotate these uh, strings by 90 degrees. So you can also play with the x ticks. Like y ticks, you have something called x ticks, right? And here, you're not going to change much information here you're okay with having January, February, March, and so on and so forth. So we are not going to make such a huge change here as to change the, the in digits into an, an int followed by a K. All we want to do here is we want to rotate whatever is here by 90 degree. Let me run this. So I'm going to get a much nicer plot in terms of x-axis. The, the months are again the same month, January, February, the data is the same. So all we have done from this line here up to the end of block 38 is just some cosmetic change, adding title, adding X label and Y label, changing the Y ticks and changing the X ticks here. All we did on the X ticks is just to rotate them by 90 degrees. So this is the so-called uh, line chart or line plot. It's, I would say, the most common type of plot that you have. In many of the applications you have, you are looking to observe a trend. You want to see what happens from one point to the other, and they are connected. Either they are time series data, or basically you are trying to analyze differentially what's happened to your data. As I said, when you are looking into a trend or a time series data, you're interested in the line chart. We have plotted the line chart using plot function under the matplotlib library. And we have done some cosmetic change like the way we did before to add title, adding X and Y label. So as you can see before, and just for the sake of repetition, adding title, X label, Y label, and changing the X axis and Y axis ticks is almost the same on all of these plots. So you have a plot which is created either through plt.bar or plt.scatter or plt.plot. On all of the three type of plots and the rest of the plots that you are going to introduce in this lecture, you can add title by doing plt.title, adding x label, y label, and adding different type of y ticks and x ticks. With the line chart, sometimes people are interested in having the exact value corresponding to the Y label to be printed here. So basically, you want to add labels to the, to the marks. Marks are just the points here. So if you want to add labels to marks, you have to somewhat annotate the line chart here. If that's the case, then all you need to do is to use the same block of code and add the following. So you basically want to annotate the data or annotate the line chart to be more accurate. So you can use the plt.annotate and which would then annotate all of these marks with the corresponding sales value. And if you decide to do the same uh, scenario that you did with the y ticks, you can simply divide each number by thousand and then put that number followed by the K. Let me run this, that's what you get. So this plt.annotate function would add the exact actual value corresponding to the sales of each month and put it on the line chart. So with that, you are adding labels to the marks. And this line of code is simply looping through all of the pairs of month and sales values 
divide the sales value by 1000 and put it on the chart using the annotate function followed by the capital K. So that's simply just a simple addition to the line chart that we have here. The fourth type of chart is the so-called box and whisker chart. So if you want to plot the distribution of data over the quartiles, the best option that you have is the box plot or box and whisker plot. We talked about quantiles and quartiles in the previous lectures. Basically, if you divide your data into, let's say, four chunks, you can see that 25% of your data, I'm, I'm talking about one uh, NumPy array or one list where you have sorted that NumPy array or list, and then you can see that 25% of your data is below some number, 50% of your data is below another number, and so on and so forth. With that, you have divided your data into four quartiles. The upper quartiles and lower quartiles are where you know, all of your data or, you know, only 25% of your data is scattered there. So if one is interested in visualizing and displaying the data distribution, then the best option, as we said, is the so-called box and whisker plot. The other addition to the box and whisker plot is the option to show or visualize the outliers. Outliers are sometimes plotted as individual dots that are in line with the whiskers. So let's start with the following data. Remember we talked about product categories, technology, office supplies, and furnitures in the previous example. So if we just create NumPy array of sales in each of these product categories, then we have three NumPy arrays corresponding to the sales. So let's do, let's run this block of code. And let's do plt.boxplot. Inside the parentheses, you have a square bracket list of the items that you want to plot. If you start with only sales technology, it's going to give you one box plot with all the information in a distribution form or fashion corresponding to the sales technology. This orange line is the median of 50 percentile of your data. You have 25 percentile, 75 percentile, and outliers as well. So you can continue adding more box plot on the same plot by adding sales for office supplies and sales for furniture within that list. So this is going to give you three box plot corresponding to sales technology sales office supplies, and sales furniture. You can further uh, zoom in into this data, do a line chart or other things to understand and better understand the outliers, the 25 percentile median, and you know other quantiles that you have here. We can keep adding title like before to this data as follows. So I'm going to use PLT title. I'm going to use the same font tick that we introduced and just add the title to be sales across countries and product categories. So this is going to give you this title over the same box plot. Obviously, you may want to have a better X label and Y label, right? Because you want to somehow put a better label instead of one, two, and three. For that, you need to add X label and Y label as we did before using the plt.x label and Y label function. So this is going to give you product category and sales. Sales is the Y axis and these are the product categories. But still within the product category, we have not yet replaced one with sales technology, two with office supplies, and three with furniture. So that's the so-called X ticks that we talked about before. So we want to use plt.x ticks, and inside the parentheses, we are somewhat interested in having the following. We want to have 
technology, office supplies, and the furniture to be printed. Let me run this and see what happens. If I run this, I'm gonna get some error. The fifth type of plots that we are going to introduce is a so-called histogram. Histogram is a plot that lets you discover and somehow uh, explore the underlying frequency distribution of the set of data that you have, mostly for the continuous data. It very much looks like the bar chart that we have, but in the bar chart, if you recall, the data was already identified or divided into furniture, technology, and office supplies. So the bar chart is not discovering anything for you. You just plot them in the buckets, specific bucket for furniture, technology, and office supplies. But here with the histogram, you would somehow ask the Python Matplotlib library to discover the frequency distribution for you. Let's begin with an example. We have the profit data in form of a single NumPy array, right? So this is a NumPy array of floating points, which is the profit of your data. It's not connected to any category or time stamp here, right? So it's just a pure single NumPy array. The best way to understand what's going on in this data, apart from doing, you know, line chart, is to do a histogram because this data is not also carrying any time information. No one has told you that this is January data, this is February data, and so on and so forth. Let me start by doing again plt, this time that hist. It's one data, so there's no x axis here and y axis in a way. You have one data, it's not a pair of data in the form that we had before you want to put it into, let's say, 100 bins and some um, cosmetic change, cosmetic add-ons add or additions here would be to have the orange as the edge color and the actual color of the histogram to be cyan. Let me run this and see what we get. Apart from the metadata, that you can also do plt.show to get rid of. So if you do plt.show in all of the previous uh, uh, charts as well. So you see all, in every uh, plot that I had before, here's some metadata printed. If you want to get rid of that, simply just do plt.show to get rid of that metadata. It's applicable to box plot, line chart, scatter plot, and so on and so forth. So with what I've done here, I have put, I've asked the histogram function to put the data into 100 bins. So it somehow divides the data in 100 bins and gives you the count of the data. So one thing to notice here that what you see on the x-axis is the actual data, which you would usually see on the y-axis, right? So again, let me repeat that. What you see on the x-axis of a histogram plot is the actual value of the profit or any numerical data that you provide. What you see on the y-axis is the count of data within your numerical values in each bin. So this is telling you that you have around 40 data you have around 40 data points very close to zero within the uh, uh, range that you have here. So uh, you have actually, you have zero to 20,000 here. So a lot of profit is very close to zero, right? The profit like 300, you know, if you go further, 471 and all of that. So 40 of your data points are very close to zero. 20 are, you know, slightly higher than zero, but still a small number. And you have very few data, almost one, 
larger than 40k, you know, or almost two. So you have two count of data larger than 40k, two count of data smaller than minus 20. So that's a negative profit and so on and so forth. If further on, you are also more interested in adding uh, more information to the X axis, uh, you can do the following. So uh, you can, uh, let me have this here. You can have the same line, plt.hist profit bins equal, let me use smaller number of bins and just skip the rest and plt.show so that will just plot those for you you may be interested to kind of get more information as to okay what i have 20 bins and i want to know what is my closest bin kind of ending in terms of the value remember as i said before the information that you are showing on the x-axis of a histogram are the values in your data which are normally printed on a y-axis for other type of charts. It's normally, not, not all the time. So this is just telling you that you have, you know, 80 data within your first bucket or bin, which is very close to zero, but you don't have the exact information at, as to what is this value here. If you want to do so, you can actually get the output of here. So it's out one, out two, and out three. So if you read the documentation, the histogram would return three outputs. The second output are the bins, right? So you can just do PLT X ticks as you did as you did before, and somehow these are the bins, right? So if let me just change the name to bins. These are your actual bins values. And do the following. If you do so, you can see that some numbers are printed here. They are overlapped due to the font and everything. So you can do a rotation equal to 90. When you do so, it's telling you that, you know, the, the first plot here, the first chart that has 80 of your values are within 0 to 4067. To be more accurate, you can actually take a look at the bins. Let's start taking a look at the bins. When you look at the bins, you can see that your bins are as follows. So your first bin starts from minus 29,000 almost to minus 25,000. So the bin, which has most of the data, is the one starting from minus 127 approximately and ending in 4067. So that's more accurate. So this is not zero. The one, when I had this plot here, you were somehow seeing zero here, and I also said zero because it was an approximate. But by looking at the bins or by just having this line executed and shown here, you can see that because you have already told the, the plot that he's to have 20 bins, it divides your data into 20 bins. Your data has a minimum of minus 29,000 and a maximum of 40, 54K. That's the range of the profit you have in your actual profit data. And this is why when you've asked it to make 20 bins, it has created these 20 bins. And these data are uh, equally separated. You can see that there is almost like a 4K, 4,000 uh, uh, distance between all of these points. So they are equally divided into chunks of 4K and then you can see the count of the values within uh, those uh, 4K uh, distances or within the two, four, 4K ranges. So a lot of your data is somewhat concentrated within this range. You can do you know, more bins and somehow get a more better data. It's not well shown here, but you can see that now you have more bins and obviously 50-ish or more than 50 data points are within, to be more accurate, they are within minus 1500 and plus 1200-ish. So that would somehow uh, 
summarize things that we can do with the PLT that hist. The fourth type of chart is the so-called box and whisker chart. So if you want to plot the distribution of data over the quartiles, the best option that you have is the box plot or box and whisker plot. We talked about quantiles and quartiles in the previous lectures. Basically, if you divide your data into, let's say, four chunks, you can see that 25% of your data, I'm, I'm talking about one uh, NumPy array or one list where you have sorted that NumPy array or list, and then you can see that 25% of your data is below some number, 50% of your data is below another number, and so on and so forth. With that, you have divided your data into four quartiles. The upper quartiles and lower quartiles are where, you know, all of your data or, you know, only 25% of your data is scattered there. So if one is interested in visualizing and displaying the data distribution, then the best option, as we said, is the so-called box and whisker plot. The other addition to the box and whisker plot is the option to show or visualize the outliers. Outliers are sometimes plotted as individual dots that are in line with the whiskers. So let's start with the following data. Remember, we talked about product categories, technology, office supplies, and furnitures in the previous example. So if we just create NumPy array of sales in each of these product categories, then we have three NumPy arrays corresponding to the sales. So let's do, let's run this block of code and let's do plt.boxplot. Inside the parentheses, you have a square bracket list of the items that you want to plot. If you start with only sales technology, it's going to give you one box plot with all the information in a distribution form or fashion corresponding to the sales technology. This orange line is the median of 50 percentile of your data. You have 25 percentile, 75 percentile, and outliers as well. So you can continue adding more box plot on the same plot by adding sales for office supplies and sales for furniture within that list. So this is going to give you three box plot corresponding to sales technology, sales office supplies, and sales furniture. You can further uh, zoom in into this data, do a line chart or other things to understand and better understand the outliers, the 25 percentile median, and you know, other quantiles that you have here. We can keep adding title like before to this data as follows. So I'm gonna use PLT title. I'm gonna use the same font tick that we introduced and just add the title to be sales across countries and product categories. So this is going to give you this title over the same box plot. Obviously, you may want to have a better X label and Y label, right? Because you want to somehow put a better label instead of one, two, and three. For that, you need to add X label and Y label as we did before using the plt.x label and Y label function. So this is going to give you product category and sales. Sales is the y-axis and these are the product categories. But still within the product category, we have not yet replaced one with sales technology, two with office supplies and three with furniture. So that's the so-called x ticks that we talked about before. So we want to use plt.x ticks and inside the parentheses, we are somewhat interested in having the following. We want to have technology, office supplies, 
and the furniture to be printed. Let me run this and see what happens. If I run this, I'm gonna get some error. The conversion error is telling you that it has failed to convert values to access units, technology, office supplies, and furniture. So in a way, the Python interpreter has not yet understood how to convert one, two, three to the list of strings that you have provided. To fix that, you need to somehow do the following map. You need to do one, two, three as a set or tuple and run the following. Once you do that, it's going to plot the same box plot. This time, the X labels, or to be more accurate, the X ticks has correctly pointing to technology, office supplies and furniture, respectively, in the order that you have initially uh, plotted the box plots and also identified here. So you can use X ticks to modify the ticks on the x-axis and y-ticks to modify the ticks on the y-axis. So this would somehow uh, make your box plot more readable. And again, if, if you still have ambiguity or confusion as to what are these uh, lines and what is 25 percentile or quartile and uh, what is the median, you know, this, this uh, orange line and what, what are the outliers, I would definitely encourage you to look into the box plot help and better understand that. But again, this is the use case where you need to not only plot your data in a box format, but you are also interested in all the data distribution in one plot. That's where you use box plot with whisker uh, lines. Finally, we would like to talk about subplots. If you want to plot sales for various markets for the years of 2012 to 2015, then you need the notion of subplots. The idea of subplot is to have multiple plots or multiple curves shown and plotted in one screen. Let's begin by importing the data that we have. So the data that we have looks like this. We have um, the years, which would serve somewhat as our x-axis. So we have uh, four years from 2012 to 2015. And then we have the sales of each continent, Africa, US, Latin America, Asia, Pacific, and Europe. Let me run this block of code. Now we would like to have them, all of these line charts. And then basically, so now the goal is to plot line charts corresponding to each of these sales in one plot. And they have to be identified by a different indicator. We are going to use different colors as our identifier. To begin with, we have to do the following. We have to do something called plt.subplots, which would return a figure and axis. Once you do this, you can see a, a blank plot. I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna do x, dot plot let me begin with the europe sales so the x-axis as mentioned would be the years and the y-axis uh, we begin with sales underscore europe so that would be and again as we know x dot plot would return two values we only we're only interested in one of them so we do something like Europe, comma, blank. And okay, let me run this and see what happens. If I run this, and as you remember, we were using dot plot to plot line charts, right? 
let's go back and just verify that we were using dot plot on their matplot li library to plot line charts line charts or or line plots or line graphs so if i do europe equal to x dot plot what i want to have on the x axis and what i want to have on the y axis i'm going to get this now also let set the label here right so one thing to notice here is that because we have multiple plots we have to do multiple set labels and that has to be done on this europe variable so europe dot set underscore label and inside parentheses i'm just going to print europe string that's the first line chart that we are plotting on this um, screen here now let's do a very similar thing for us and central america so the sales here would be usca and we have usca here and let me define this variable to be usca usca okay so when i do so i'm gonna get two plots the first one is in blue corresponding to europe and then the second one is the usca remember we had to do plt.legend to get the corresponding legend that would help us uh, figure out which curve belongs to which uh, continent sales we may also want to set another differentiator right so not only color but we can also use uh, different uh, lines for uh, different plots to do so we can do usca dot set dashes so instead of having a solid line we can have a dash line and then we can set what type of dashes we want so two 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 let's do it and let's see what this is going to have uh, two solid two dash followed again by two solid two dash so that's the kind of uh, setting that you have so we have a two point line two point break two point line two point break that's the interpretation of these numbers let's go to asia pacific so that would be asia pacific set label and set dash for asia pacific i'm gonna use two two ten two when I run this, I'm getting a two point line, two point break, 10 point line, 10, two point break. So that's why you can see for the Asia Pacific, you have a longer line followed by a shorter line and two point break with, with, in, with in between. So that's just the set dashes. You can play around with this and see what we get. So let's just uh, move on on this and add other data. The purpose of this uh, part was to figure out how you can plot multiple line charts or multiple line graphs within one plot and separate them with either labels or dashes, solid and all of that. So let's do Africa. And um, for Africa, let's just use 2252. And let's just finish this with Latin America. Set the label and set the dashes. I'm going to use 25. Five two. So you can see that the Latin America has um, two point lines, five point breaks, five point lines, two point breaks. So that you can see there's kind of like an asymmetric version of uh, breaks as well. 
Uh, you can also um, add kind of reposition this anchor. If you want to reposition the anchor, you have to say, I want the box to anchor to be within this uh, location. So that would just bring it out because you have 1.31 kind of on the X axis, you're going out and this is 0.4. So like a kind of, you know, if, if I start, let me just do zero, zero to tell you what, what's happening here. So if you do zero, zero, it would bring the, the point here, but basically you can use one point, some number to get it out of the X axis, but still like here within the Y. So uh, this is basically, and you can use also plt.show to get rid of that small metadata. So again, to summarize, we have uh, used the uh, subplot, uh, which gives us two output to return, a figure and an axis, and we are using axis, the X value to use the plot on top of that to get the line chart of all the sales variable that we have with respect to the year, we are using set label and set dashes to differentiate them. By default, you can see that it, it, it is changing the color. So the, the more you add uh, curves, the more you see different colors. So it's not gonna go with the original blue color. It changes the color, uh, you know, to let's say from blue to orange, then green and then red and so on and so forth. So that's uh, plotting multiple plots using subplots, uh, which are identified by different colors, labels, and dashes. Now let's try subplots, but this time plot separate graphs. So we want each chart to be of different types and hence separate graphs. In order to do so, you would start with the same uh, plt.subplots, but within the subplots, you are going to specify how many different or separate graphs you want. So n calls is the number of separate graphs that you want. I'm gonna set this to three. N rows are the number of rows that you are going to get. So you're going to get three columns and two rows they are sharing x axis and they are sharing y axis so the moment i run this i'm gonna get three i'm gonna get two by three blank figures or plots that i share that are sharing x axis and y axis what I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to access each of these blank plots by using something like this. So I'm going to do X I J, right? So remember when we were using, when we had no parameter specified for subplots, we had one figure. We had one figure and one X. So whatever we plot, which would be dropped somewhere within this box. Now we have a three by two, so we can specify where to put our specific plot. So for instance, you can now say that I want the Europe information to be in the first plot, which is X zero, zero. Right, so I'm, I'm gonna just plot the same information I'm going to do line chart, right? This is referring to the fact that it's going to plot a line chart for you on the first zero, zero uh, subplot. So you're going to get the same blue curve here on the zero, zero uh, or the first uh, row, first column uh, subplot. Now I'm going to continue with USCA right? I'm going to continue with USCA, but I'm going to make some change. I want this time the USCA to be a bar plot, right? Just, just for the sake of uh, trying all of the charts and plots that we have learned in this lecture. 
So it's going to be sales USCA years, um, the same label, but I want it to be on zero one. And because it's a bar chart, I don't need any dash here, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this one. So, okay, I'm getting some error here. Let's see what the errors are. So basically the bar plot, unlike the line chart does not have two outputs. It, does, it only has one output. So it's saying there are too many values to unpack. So if I remove this comma, I'm gonna get one output, which is USCA, and I'm gonna set the label as USCA. Obviously I need uh, the PLT legend if I want, but I can just run this for now. So I'm going to get a bar chart, which each chart or each bar, sorry, I'm gonna get four bars in my bar chart. Each of the bars are corresponding to one of the years, 2012, 2013, 14, and 15. And if I go to just the USCA, you can see that like the first two are very close, then it has increased. So the sales for USCA has increased for 2014 and 2015 respectively. That's what I get. So on this one, which is 02x, so the subplot on the first row and the third column, I am going to get, I'm going to plot the Africa data. So the Africa data is going to be 02. And this time I want this to be scatter plot, right? So I'm just trying all we have learned on this lecture here. Um, I don't need this one, obviously. Or yeah, I don't need this one. And I don't need this comma because it's the scatter is only returning one output for me. Uh, when I run this, um, I'm gonna get scatter plot of the sales of 2012, 13, 14, and 15, corresponding to the Africa continent. Let's continue with the Asia Pacific. Let's have it again to be like a plot. It's going to be one, second row, first column. Uh, I can use dashes this time the same dashes, let's just run this and see what we get. So I have plotted the Asia sales on this subplot using again the axis or X10. And remember, FIG and X are the outputs of subplots. The only difference here is that when you want multiple subplots, I'm going to identify how many subplots I have, which is six here, and how I'm going to distribute it on the screen. So I want them to be distributed in two rows and three columns. I can add the Latin America as the last data, and this time let's just use the same uh, line chart. So this is going to be, you know, second row and uh, second column. So that would just plot this Latin America using 2552 uh, break and line, solid line distribution that I want. And this is how I get my data. And this would be blank because I have only five uh, sets of data to plot. So we have tried two different approaches on subplot, plotting all of them in one plot or one subplot, if you will, or plotting them on multiple subplots, each belongs to one and accessing those using this uh, output of the subplot and indexing it in a matrix format. Now let's try a different formation. I would like to have uh, four charts in four columns and one row, which are sharing Y, right? This is what I want. When I run this, I'm gonna get one row, four columns and four subplots. Um, originally I had uh, six, one of them was empty, so I had five sets of data corresponding to Europe, USA, Africa, Asia Pacific, and Latin America. 
I'm going to have a different formation where I still have Europe in one separate subplot, USCA in one another separate plot, Africa in the third separate subplot, but I'm going to combine Asia Pacific and Latin America into one uh, of the subplots here. To begin, uh, let's do the following. Let's just bring the same code here uh, for Europe. Uh, because we have only one row, we can just access through one index. So this is going to um, plot the Europe sales in here. And I'm also going to add another cosmetic change. I would like this curve to be in red instead of blue. When I run this, I'm getting the sales for the Europe in the first subplot in color red and the label is also uh, Europe. What I'm gonna do also is that I'm gonna also set a title here. So that would be Europe set title sales in Europe. The set title should be run on X zero and not the Europe because it, it refers to the entire uh, subplot. Okay, so I have this title for the first one. Let's go back and uh, bring in the same code for USCA. And we would like to have the USCA. Now let's try another thing. Let's try a bar chart for USCA. It's going to be X zero. X1, this time the second subplot. We don't need set dash because it's a bar chart now. And we need a title for X1, USCA. Running this is going to give me this one. Also, it's giving me another error, which is telling me that when I unpack this, it doesn't have two values. It only has one value. So there are too many values to unpack. So I don't need the comma here. And I can, yeah, I'm going to get the bar chart for the USCA data, the sales of the USCA uh, for the same four years that we had before. Let's move on to the third subplot, which is the Africa. I'm going to use the same scatter plot here uh, for the Africa. So that would be sales in Africa, this time on the third subplot. And you see there's a bit of an overlap because the fonts are larger and we're going to fix it in a bit. As mentioned in the very beginning, I would like to combine or merge the data for Asia Pacific and Latin America in one, uh, one of these subplots. So for Asia, I'm going to use bar chart. So this would be Asia equal to, let's use this, access this time three bar years and sales of Asia Pacific. I would like the width of this bar chart to be 0.5 and the color to be royal blue, which has to be in form of a string. Let's run this and see what we get. We get the sales for Asia Pacific in the fourth subplot, which is X3 inside square bracket. The width is 0.5, slightly narrower than the, the default width for the bar that we got here. So if you want to aggregate the data for Latin America on the same chart, you have to use X3 and you need a different color. Let's say I'm going to use C green as my color and this is the sales for Latin America. So you see it has aggregated this the second data beneath the first data or let's say one on top of the other. I can set the title for X3. So there's one title. So X3, set title, sales in, let's say, 
Asia, Pacific, and Latin America. Okay. And you can also add a legend here because this fourth curve requires a legend. You, you need to understand what each color, what type of data or which data each color refers to. So that would be X3 legend. And remember, as we said before, you need two sets of data. This one is just going to be a string of data which is Asia Pacific and Latin America strings. The first data is going to be Asia zero, which is this data, Asia zero and uh, Latin America zero. So it knows which data refers to which legend. Let me run this. Uh, so I'm getting an error. And it's which is telling me that the legend, the line to the object is not sub subscriptable. So let me just change this to Latin America. Okay. So I did not need to add a zero indexing here. So this is just, it's going to see, it's going to tag the data for Asia to this label or legend and the second one to this legend. I need to set the size inches as follows. So in order for this data, as you can see, all of the numbers are kind of overlapping with each other. The titles are overlapping and this legend is also kind of uh, screening over this third uh, subplot. So I'm gonna use the following code. The following code is actually referring, going to take fig and set the size inches to the following number. Uh, let me run this and see what we get. So the set underscore size underscore inches is going to set the figure size in inches. Remember one inch is 2.54 centimeter. So this is setting the figure size into 20.5 and 5.5. It is providing a distance between the subplots as well. So this was a just a comprehensive example to have multiple subplots adding legends, titles, and also trying different type of plots, such as line plot, bar plot, or scatter plot on each of the subplots. You have the option to add multiple rows and columns or just to aggregate all of the plots like this one, where you don't specify any parameter in the subplots uh, function. With that, we have uh, finalized our lecture in Matplotlib. As mentioned, uh, Matplotlib gives you a lot of uh, ways to plot data. Depending on the type of data or your objective as to what is the main thing that you want to present to the audience, you may use uh, bar charts like this one where you have x-axis and then y-axis is carrying all the data you want. The purpose of this is to somewhat bolden each data separately. In addition to bar chart, you have the option to, to do scatter plot. Scatter plots would just plot every individual point within the x-y uh, region that you have. The third option that you had was line chart. As mentioned, that line chart or line plot or the so-called line graph is one of the most frequently used type of plots on their Matplotlib library. That would give you the ability to plot time series data or a data in which the consecutive uh, values on the x-axis have some sort of a connection. Could it be date, date, time, or, or month? Ultimately, we talked about uh, box and whisker chart. This is where you want to show the distribution of data in terms of quartiles and so on and so forth. The fifth type of data that we talked about was histogram. The purpose of histogram was to discover the underlying frequency distribution. You can see that what values of your data are more frequent and what are less frequent. Uh, unlike the previous four types of bar plots, box plots and scatter plots, this one 
carries the information on the x-axis and the y-axis is only the count of each uh, data point. Finally, we talked about subplots where you can aggregate multiple data in one uh, plot or in many plots all together in one place. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture and like before, I would urge you to go through all of these videos uh, run the code one by one. If you have any questions or concerns, I would definitely point you to the Matplotlib library documentation and there are multiple blogs on the internet where you can find alternative solutions. Again, within the scope of this course, we are able to cover limited types of examples and input parameters, but there are tons of things that you can tweak and change and get more interesting type of plots that you're interested in. Over the duration of this session, you have learned to plot a lot of different types of charts like bar chart, scatter plot, line graph, histogram, and box plots. Each of these plots can be used to look at the information in a different light. For instance, the histogram can help compare different classes, or a scatter plot helps you gain insight into a cluster of data and so on and so forth. You learned how to create each of these charts using the Matplotlib library. That's all for now before moving on to the next module. Make sure that you visit the documentation for any extra knowledge that you might be interested in.